Watch out, pressing one wrong button on your computer could cause it to explode. Well, obviously not. Today we're gonna go over 10 really common myths and lies about computers that you should probably stop believing right now. Some of them are rooted in reality and others are really just nonsense. But before we get started, as a quick request to you guys, and I really hate that I have to do this, but since the new YouTube algorithm really only favors videos with a lot of likes and comments, I have to beg that if you decide you like this video at any point while watching, please give it a thumbs up. And as you may have noticed, the YouTube algorithm really hates my channel and barely shows new videos to you guys, even if you're subscribed. So if you like and comment and enable notifications, it really helps out. But anyway, enough blabbering, let's go. So starting off with the first myth that you must restart your computer after installing every program or else it won't work, it's just not gonna work. Now, in reality, nine times out of 10, when a program says that you have to do this, it's just not true. Now, yes, on very rare occasions, you actually do have to restart the computer for the software to work, but I could probably count that on one hand the number of times I've seen that happen. And the reason they say this is because sometimes the installation of the software will have to modify files that are already in use by something else, and to unlock that file of sorts, you would have to restart the computer. But in almost all cases, if you just run the program after installing it, it'll be fine and it's not gonna break anything. Next, number two, Windows is an insecure operating system. Now this is a myth that's based on faulty logic. Yes, it's true that most hackers target Windows users and there are more viruses for Windows, but the reason for that is simply because there are so many more Windows users than other operating systems. And that makes it more worth a hacker's time to focus on Windows. So if they create a virus for Windows, it has a higher chance of success if you'd consider it that. However, if you keep Windows constantly up to date, you are really good with automatic backups, you don't put it off for weeks on end, it actually is pretty secure because a lot of hacks, many of them, rely on exploits that have already been patched if you would only keep it up to date. So if you don't keep your operating system up to date, that's when you're gonna get got. And if you are holding on to really old operating systems like XP, you're just putting yourself at risk. The next myth isn't so prevalent anymore, but it's that you need to safely eject a thumb drive before unplugging it. The reason that feature exists and it says to do that is to make sure that nothing on the thumb drive is still being used and written to. If you pull out a thumb drive while a file is being copied to it or something like that, you do have a good chance of permanently corrupting that file or others. So if you just copy an unimportant file to the thumb drive and you know it's done, there's nothing being written to it, nothing is gonna happen if you unplug it. But if you say are saving an incredibly important document like a thesis onto it, and you're not totally sure if it's being accessed by another program or Microsoft Word is still saving to it or something, safely ejecting it is certainly not a bad idea and I would do that, but most of the time, 99% of the time, nothing's gonna happen as long as you don't unplug it in the middle of saving. All right, number four isn't so much a myth, but it's installation disks for monitors, routers, keyboards, and other nonsense. I think that most of you know what I'm talking about here. I have no idea why manufacturers still include stupid hardware installation disks with their products. And even in the few cases where you actually do need to install a driver for a device to work because it's not supported by Windows by default, that installation disk is going to have completely outdated version of the driver on it and you're gonna have to download the updated driver from the website anyway. So ignore driver installation disks, just to install it directly from the manufacturer website. Number five, you don't need any virus if you're good with computers. Wrong, sir, wrong. Now, of course, common sense and good practices for security are the best antivirus, but there are occasional situations where you can get infected with zero interaction or fault of your own. For example, if you're visiting a website, maybe it was somehow compromised. And in that case, a hacker may take advantage of an exploit in your browser or a plugin for your browser. And this is why it's so critical to keep all your software up to date. Because again, most of these exploits rely on outdated software. And if you have a really outdated version, all those exploits have already been found for a while, and sometimes it's a drive-by attack 
where you don't even have to click on anything. It's just malicious code on the website. Not super often, but it can happen. Keeping software up to date includes your browser itself, your operating system, browser plugins, and Java. If you have Java, not JavaScript by the way, Java, installed on your computer, First of all, I recommend disabling it in browser altogether because you almost never need it. And I would even consider uninstalling it altogether. You almost never see Java plugins and there's only really not that many that use it anyway. Java is one of the most commonly exploited softwares out there and it's because nobody keeps it up to date. So either keep it up to date, disable it in your browser or just uninstall it completely. You're probably not gonna even notice. Next, number six is related to number five, and that is, if you have an antivirus, you can't get viruses. I hope I don't have to explain this one. Antivirus software is not bulletproof, and many rely on virus definitions, so if it's a new virus, or one that has been slightly modified, it won't be detected because it's not in the database. Of course, today, antiviruses also use heuristics, which looks at the behavior of the program and spots anything suspicious, but that too is not perfect. There's a lot of false positives, a lot of false negatives as well. So just because you have an antivirus doesn't mean you can ignore all the other best practices. Antivirus should be a last line of defense. Number seven, if you pay for a faster internet plan, websites will load faster. The only time this is true is if you have a really low tier internet, such as 20 megabits per second or less. But going from 50 to 100 megabits, for example, is not gonna really have an effect on how fast websites load. Mostly because websites do not take up much bandwidth at all to load. The content on them, like videos and that sort of thing, might take more but the website itself might only be like a few megabytes at most. And at a certain point, it's like using a fire hose to fill up a bucket when you could just use a garden hose. And even with downloading files, it's usually the website server itself that's limiting the download speed, not your connection. I mean, I have gigabit, and the only time I saturate my connection is when I'm downloading from major services that are used to handling huge downloads like Steam for video games. Usenet, Amazon, Google, and others. But if you go to download something from an average website, they are most likely throttling downloads because they don't want to have to pay to be able to handle everyone's high-speed internet. They want to be able to pay for a lower bandwidth and just give everyone a slower download speed to save costs. Now, obviously, there's plenty of reasons to get a very fast internet speed if you have a lot of people in your house, or you do download huge files regularly, or you just like to have fast internet, you probably know why, then obviously I'm not gonna say don't get it. Now, number eight is very near and dear to my heart, and that is that people who are good with computers know how to fix every computer problem. Well, for those of you who don't already know, I'm gonna let you in on some top secret information. Don't tell anyone. You see, 99% of the time, we have no idea what the problem is, and we simply Google the error message to see if anyone else has already figured it out on a forum or something like that. You see, most of the time, being good at fixing computers actually just means we're good at searching for the solution and knowing the right questions to ask about how to find the solution that someone already came up with. So of course, every once in a while, there is a problem that apparently no one has ever had before, and that does take quite a bit of critical thinking, but most of the time, you can just find the answer as a top search result. So try it yourself next time you have an error message, Google it, and see if you can't figure it out yourself. All right, number nine, more RAM is better. Well, actually it is, <laughs> but just like the internet speed myth, getting more than you need probably won't help. I would say for the average person, eight gigabytes of RAM is definitely enough. I mean, the most common programs don't use that much RAM and they only use what they need. Now, if you're using a heavy hitter program like Adobe Premiere Pro or Photoshop, then yeah, get as much RAM as you can afford because that type of professional work will gobble up as much memory as you can throw at it. But those of you who do need that much RAM don't need me to tell you that. But one more thing to remember about RAM is that just important as the amount of RAM is the speed or frequency and the latency of the RAM. And yes, latency is equally as important as the clock frequency. So if you don't understand how latency relates to frequency, don't buy any more RAM until you do. And I did actually make another video on my old channel here. If you want to see my explanation of that, should be pretty helpful. 
And now finally, number 10 is that you need to wear an anti-static wristband anytime you open your computer or else lightning bolts will literally shoot out of your hands and incinerate your entire computer. But really, unless you're wearing like wool socks and drag your feet across the carpet or something, anti-static wristbands aren't exactly as important as you think. This is all anecdotal right here, but I've built several computers, opened my computer countless times, even on carpeting, probably not the best idea, but I've never fried a component nor heard of any friends of doing the same. I'm not gonna go as far as outright telling you to not use one because they do help, they do what they're supposed to, but if you don't use one, odds are you're gonna be fine. That being said though, if I were handling an extremely expensive component like a CPU, I would still like to play it safe and wear a simple $2 wrist strap no matter what the odds, it's just not worth the risk. But if you're at least reasonably careful, there's not much to worry about otherwise. So there you have it, 10 common computer myths and the truth behind them. For some of them, they're more my opinion, so you're free to disagree. But if you guys did like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you think I'm an idiot, feel free to give it a thumbs down. Also, if you guys know some myths of your own, be sure to leave a comment letting us know what that is. And also vote up other people's comments if you think they had some good myths ideas too. If you guys wanna check some other videos, I'll put those right here. You can click on these on the right hand side, even if you're on a phone. And also consider subscribing because I make new videos three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And consider clicking the bell next to the subscribe button to get notifications when I do upload so you don't rely on YouTube to know what you wanna watch. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys either way. Thanks for watching and let me know of course if you have any suggestions for future topics. I do wanna hear about it. So I'll see you next time. Have a good one.